so much for my motivational skills. T. Will did not hear me say that we were not emotionally committed. It's kind of like my wife. She doesn't listen to me either. So. Um, I'm just in awe of uh, the players character. Uh, I'm in awe of the support staff's knowledge, uh, Sonny Washington and Howard Isley. Um, I managed that game and uh, Howard Isley coached the offense every possession and uh, Sonny Washington scout and we collaborated on you know how we wanted to try to deal with with uh, not just not just one of the best players in the country, but an offensive mind in Chris and his staff, uh, and it was it was a challenge. And I would say productive use of our time yesterday. We did not practice on Friday, but productive use of our time uh, Saturday uh, was the result. What we wanted to try to be was balanced. We didn't want to come out of here and say, well, we were too high or too low. We don't want to come out and say we're too physical. We just want to balance. And I, I thought we did that. And uh, the number that jumps to me is for us to have 24 bench points, that, that is just uh, an extraordinary, extraordinary uh, performance. So, um, That was a really cool atmosphere. It was a really, really cool atmosphere. Uh, there was a kid behind the bench. I, I don't know if I'll ever see him again, but I want to thank him uh, because he kept telling me that I was bald. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, I've gone along this whole time thinking I had a thinning hairline, not bald. So I appreciate him letting me know that. The other words that he was using with bald, not on a Sunday, fella, not on a Sunday. <laughs> Uh, Phil, you, you spoke after the Iowa game about wanting a Hellraiser on the team. Is there one player in particular that you felt embodied that today? Uh, not, not really, not, not vocally, uh, but their physical presence. The, the physical presence, uh, when I looked for it, when I told them that Hunter would not be playing, and their presence didn't change. Earlier in the year, maybe we would have shriveled up and worried. But uh, knowing that the change in kind of rotation, Terrence Williams moves up and Caleb played some four, uh, you know, come on. Jerome Foles got in that game, right? And and, and I just think that, that uh, it was yesterday. There was a sense yesterday that Okay, well, we're, we're going there. And, and I gave them this before the game that when you compete, it's cool to say, oh, we're competitors and we're competitors and we're competitors. But guess what? When you compete, if you and I are flipping coins, I want to win. So we came here to win. And I don't mean that in an arrogant way, but, but uh, that, that, that Hellraiser was every single one of them, every loose ball, the steals. I, I don't know what the numbers would say. Uh, come on, 11 steals. That has to be our season high. We were on every ball. So we were re raising hell on that court. Uh, every guy that got in the game. When did you tell the team that Hunter went to uh, The timeline, um, I went to Mass this morning at 7.30. Uh, came out of Mass and there was a text on my phone that he had been up uh, all night. He had not fallen asleep till about six o'clock. Uh, uh, and that we would see. He would not be at film, which was at 8.45. He came down about 9.20. I, I saw him go for some toast. And then when we got to the arena, I just blanked it out. I said, some, tell me what we, what, what we have when we get to the arena. And he didn't feel, um, he didn't feel strong enough. Uh, so at that point in time, I just, 
you know, I, even at film session, I said, look, I don't know what Hunter, what the story is with Hunter, so Brandon Johns, whatever you have to do for your pregame routine, you, you now are, you're, you're on, and uh, you will not be the primary defender on Liddell, but you will be the four-man on offense. So we flipped that. Um, and then uh, we, we just proceeded, once we, once we got here, and he wasn't strong enough to, to even dress. We, we were looking for like another gym. I don't know if they have another practice gym or where he could kind of go by himself and see if he could go. Uh, but as you can see, his, his coloring is, is off and uh, hopefully it doesn't run through everybody. I think there is a, look, I don't purport to do as what you do, all do. Uh, but there is a storyline because his roommate on the road is Terrence Williams. So did Hunter like by osmosis? Did he become a scorer? Uh, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Something to follow. Uh, Devontae Jones had 14 points, five, uh, five assists in the second half alone, 21 and nine for the game. Can you speak to his growth down the stretch heading into the postseason? It seemed like any time he needed a bucket, it was in his hands. He was getting the bucket. Well, obviously, if you look at his numbers at Coastal, it, it's they're eye popping. Uh, we all watched a lot of film to make sure that he was the right guy. Uh, that's a tough spot. It's a tough spot to be a point guard coming into a program that is successful, uh, and you're coached by a pro. You know, like Howard Isley has been to the highest levels as, uh, as a point guard. So he has a point guard whisperer, so to speak, and there's just been growth and confidence. And, uh, you know, we, we can't walk out of here and, and, and not acknowledge what Frankie, Frankie Collins did. And Frankie Collins' growth is due to Devontae's growth. Devontae has, has been for us all year long a good practice player. I don't mean like the results are always good, but he gives you an honest effort and to see him reward it. And I can't tell you how many of those floaters we've taken, you know, like whatever that, that uh, and I'm, I don't remember the man's name, but the good to great idea, like we're co closing in on 10,000 floaters. So he, we have confidence, it, he has confidence, and uh, I'm really happy with his finishes. I, I just thought, I believe, I believe in college basketball, you win through your point guards. And uh, certainly, DJ led us today. Michael? Phil, during this, uh, the five game stretch where you were filling in for Juwan, did you, I guess, learn anything or see anything about this team where you were looking at it from a different perspective than what your role was, was previously? Did that allow you to learn anything oh. new or glean mm -hmm. anything about this group? Wow. I, no, I, no, I don't think so. I, I'm, look, they're good young people. Uh, with the emphasis on young, and uh, I thought this, but I, but I but I am amazed that like they're resilient. In that, there was an easy excuse to not play well against Rutgers, right? That was easy, and then to come back after Illinois, that and that was physical. That was a physical challenge Illinois and yet we came back and we had this energy um, and I think besides resilient I would say adaptability because there are some things that I do different like it's a small thing like I don't use a whistle in practice I would rather train them to listen to my voice not train in terms of like you know, you know no I would, I would rather coach them to listen for my voice Juwan uses a whistle that was different um, so they were adaptable and they allowed us 
to coach them. And they allowed us to direct, no excuses, no excuses, right? Had we walked out of here instead of three and two, two and three, no excuses. We weren't good enough those, the two nights. We weren't good enough. But I would say resiliency and adaptability. Okay, coach, that's all the time we have. Thank you. Be safe.